Well, hello and welcome, everyone. It's another edition of the Voices of Courage show. This is your host, Ken D. Foster. Today is the day that you get to change how you perceive yourself and communicate forever. It's a big statement. But listen, if you stay tuned to this show today and you really get the tips, the secrets, the the strategies and the wisdom that we're going to be giving you today, quite frankly, you're going to step into a new version of yourself. You're going to start to view yourself in a different way and what's possible for you in a bunch of new ways. You know, communication is the key to life right now. If you can communicate effectively, you can change your life in so many ways, not only your life, but the lives of maybe hundreds or thousands or even millions of other people just by your words. You know, it's, uh, what is it? If you want to, if you, you know, don't, don't strive to be the star, strive to be the moon. Think about it. The moon is much brighter than the stars, right? The stars are way out there. But if you're the moon in your own life, if you can shine that light to a lot of people through your voice, through your communication, through your presence, through your charisma, then your life can get better and better. And so can those around you. I'm going to introduce a very special guest uh, right when we get back from the break. But let me tell you, this guest has generated over $2 billion dollars in profits and revenue by helping people to step into their brilliance and their greatness. You'll be amazed who it is. Ah, well, you are powerful. And I will try to give that to my audience that you uh, admit to the world so brilliantly yourself. So let me let me uh, do an award-winning TV host, author, motivational speaker, entrepreneur, and one of the world's leading health and wellness experts. Uh, in fact, she was the uh, uh, nominated inductee into the National Fitness Hall of Fame. She's grossed over two point five billion dollars. That's with a B. And, uh, the most inspiring people on television through her roles as sought-after spokesperson, the broadcast journalist, and success. Results a coach to celebrities, sales team, CEOs, and much, much more. She's a motivational speaker. And more importantly, she who can really help you to change bar at the core. If you pay attention to the principles, we're going to be talking about that. So Forbes, welcome to the show. Well, I love hearing my credits read. Thank you. Thank you. She sounds so impressive. Well, I appreciate you being here. And yes, you know, the words that you speak that come out of your mouth, they're free. They don't charge, you don't charge for words. And I'll tell you, if you use the right ones in the right order, you can get anything you want. You can make more money. You can have deeper relationships with yourself and other people. I'm excited on Ken's show to share some of those secrets that have not only propelled me, but I've got over 16,000 students right now in the last two years since COVID who are really enjoying what I have been teaching. So excited to be here. Well, I'm excited to have you. So let me ask you this. Um, let's start from the beginning. Like, what what was it that triggered you to step into being you and starting to uh, get yourself into the world in a in a greater way? Is there a story behind that? Where, where did you start? Well, I couldn't step into the world being anybody else because nobody else would have me. Uh, it's, it's kind of a, um, you know, we have a weird delay. I hope that you're okay with that because I'm not quite hearing everything that you're saying. Um but we'll give it, we'll give it a shot here. Um, so what a great question about how did I get started? And I love sharing it because so many people think that you start from the wherever it's like, no, when I started a long time ago and I was a goofy, awkward little girl who grew up on Long Island and I was going to share a slide with you, but I'm not sure I can do that. And one of the things that for me personally, ironically, when I was in first grade, uh, I had something wrong with my jaw. My teeth grew kind of weird. And I'd got hit in the face with a baseball bat. So I had a broken nose, which was odd. And I had a set of railroad track braces for eight years of my life. And if you put a little girl in that and make her look that ugly for so long, some strange things start to happen. At some point, they had to put something in my mouth, kind of, and I talk like this. And for two years, I couldn't talk. And I think that's why you can't shut me up. <clears throat> and I had very few friends growing up. I was very isolated. I had a lot of television to watch, though. And I began to dream. I spent a lot of time on my own. And I thought about what does James Bond's life look like? 
I want that. I want to drive fancy cars and wear amazing clothes and ski around the world. And I will tell you that 40 some odd to 50 some odd years later, I've done all of those things. And it's a funny thing about manifestation. In fact, we are so committed to it in my world that we call it Forbesing it. What have you Forbes lately? And so you've got this goofy little girl from a small hometown nobody really cared about. And I kept manifesting things to come true. And some of them were the weirdest things. Uh, when my dad, when I was 15 years old, he was in a bad accident, spent three years in the hospital. And my mom comes to me and she says, kiddo, we don't have any money for college. That was the only thing I was looking forward to. And then she says, but there's a beauty pageant that's coming along with a scholarship. And I'm like, and she, yeah, I know. Now, Ken, that was probably the, the saddest day of my life when my mother looked at me and agreed that I was not pretty. And that's all I wanted to be as a little girl. And my dad's doctor overheard this strange. And he said, I'm going to fix your daughter's nose. Now, who would think that would matter, right? Well, he did. And, I, and if Ken, I'll send you some of the pictures that you can use for this because it's a bit of a traumatic, dramatic transformation. And I looked in the mirror when I saw my new face and said, I'm going to enter this pageant. I need, a money, I need money for scholarship. And I looked at my dad who had a big bandage on one hand as we walked into the first meeting. And I said, one of these little girls is going to be on TV with Bob Hope on NBC and have her dreams come true. And it's going to be me. Now, I was 15 when I said it. I won that competition. And you go, well, how did you do that? There were girls who were prettier, smarter, better manners. Didn't matter. I wanted it in my heart more than anyone. I just did. I had a reason. It was not about me. It was about my parents. And my daughter to this day talks about this concept of manifestation. Yeah. Of choosing the words to help you craft and believe the life that you want to live so that you end up living it. Well, there's something about uh, uh, courage in this society. We talk about it as people running into burning an animal. But then I'm here and say, into that courage and uh, was able to manifest in this life. This, uh, this, uh, so let me ask you this. Apply in the, what you're doing today. As you look back on that, what, what are the principles that you would station of that uh, first dream of yours? Well, one, I've just kept dreaming. And that's a really important thing to know that throughout your life, you'll have a lot of ups and downs. I've had my share of tragedies and traumas. And it's not that life happens for you. It happens, not, it, it happens, it doesn't happen to you. It happens for you. If you have the wherewithal to go, wow, why am I going through this? What life lesson can I get from it? And I am now 62 years old. So I've had four or five decades of reinvention. I've been an actress and a television host. I was an infomercial star. I've grossed tons of money doing things. But along the way, one thing was always a constant, that when I could finally communicate and speak, I put it to good use. And now I teach that. And so we can dive into that because where I am right now is I am in love with my second husband. I have two beautiful twins who just turned 20. My son's in college. My daughter runs a multi-million dollar company that she started. And you're, wow, how did you do all this? <clears throat> we have a little bracelet here. It says, what would Forbes do? And Forbes, and I talk to the third person, thinks a little differently from most people. And one of the things that has gotten me where I am is this art of pitching. Now, by no means is pitching selling. It's not about getting, asking people for money. Pitching in my world and what I teach is the art of enrolling people into a vision, into something that you want them to do and just getting a yes. And how do you do that? Well, one of the big secrets when you talk about courage of communication is believing that you're not speaking for your own sake. I've told my story a lot. I'm not on here today to tell my story. I know my story. What I am on here is to encourage somebody's ears who's an entrepreneur or a stay-at-home mom or a woman leaving corporate world. And by the way, I talk to men and women. And they're like, wow, wait a second. If, if she, did I just hear that she overcame massive obstacles and became successful anyway? Didn't marry anybody rich? Didn't get in any inheritance? Did it on her own? Yeah. So when I stand here and I tell these stories because it's the way in which you talk to yourself. I taught a class today. And Ken, it's so sad when I ask mostly women they don't feel that they're enough. They don't feel that they deserve to win. And if that's you, we got to shift that speak. So Ken, if I asked you, is there something that you're pretending not to know? You're a very successful man. What might the answer to that question be? What are you pretending not to know? Well, there's a lot of things I don't know. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of things I don't know. But uh, I guess if I had one thing that uh, I didn't know, um, 
I would probably, and I wanted to know it, I, what I would do is I would probably take some time and meditate and go with the Oh, no, 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 no. I don't mean, I don't mean uh, actually, school. I don't mean actually knowing. I mean, what are you pretending yeah. not to know? Do you believe how successful you are and who you are and what you're doing in this world? Oh, oh sure. Yeah, I, mean, I got to, I'm, pretend, I'm pretending not to know how to be a billionaire. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely pretending that. Yeah. Right. And it's funny when you uncover that. I'm, well, pretending, so here's a- I'm pretending not. not uh, well, I, and maybe we'll bring it down to earth even more. Yeah, I'm pretending not to know how to uh, put my show out on a uh, hundred different TV stations. I'm only on thirty right now, but I'm pretending like I don't know how to put it on. And that's a do. good one. And if you don't, you know how to figure it out because you've always had to figure out things in your life. So if you're listening, are you pretending? To not believe that you're successful, that you matter, that your voice matters, that your opinion matters. I find so many people that way. And one of the things that I do when it comes to teaching pitch, I have a program called One Minute to Millions. And One Minute to Millions came about because I've only had a minute in commercials to make an impression, to make sales. You know that a minute, this last Super Bowl, sold for $17 million, one minute of television time. You better be really good in what you do with your minute. And so my one minute to millions is a formula and it could be a million likes, a million impressions, hopefully a million dollars, which is easier to make than most people imagine. But if you're pretending not to know how to make it, you won't make it. So Ken, one of the things that we do in this, in this template, and I love to play with people because they love to do this, is one, to start with saying your name. You say your name all the time, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So say your name and then say I'm known as, and give me three words that you're known as. Oh, I love that. Well, listen, I got to take a quick break. And when we come back, I will give you what who I am known as. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. Welcome back, everybody. This is your host, Candy Foster. We're speaking with uh, Dr. Forbes Riley today, and she's asking me a question. Who, who am I known as? Well, I'm known as the coach of the rich and famous. I'm known as a, a uh, father and grandfather. I'm known as an author, speaker, trainer. There you go. <laughs> okay. So now, and by the way, when, pe- when you go to a networking event, they always ask you, what do you do? When, you, when someone says, what do you do? What do you tell them, Ken? I tell them I work with entrepreneurs that want to uh, scale their businesses to uh, higher levels. And we, I do that by, uh, and, and that's really what I say. That's it. Yeah. Well, and that's a great, but here's the thing. When it comes to communication, if you can get yeses a lot, that, w- that will up your level of engagement and how much money you make. So when somebody asks you, what do you do? And you say, I'm a digital marketer. I work in a gas station. I do what I- we don't really care what you do. We care what you can do for others. We care what you can do for me. And so when Ken says he works with entrepreneurs to scale them up, something tells me he probably gets a lot of engagement from that statement. Yes. Well, so often that's not the case with when I ask you what you do. do. And people will tell stories that don't go anywhere. And I'm going to tell you that the skill of communication, what we're doing right now is an art. I don't know if you were born with it. I've been studying it my entire life. Right. Me too. Yeah. Well, and so people who just say, I'm going to step on a stage and be a speaker or, or have my own podcast or my own show. Sometimes it's very self-serving. It's not why, why do other people want to listen to this and be engaged? And so this whole concept of communication from the moment you wake up in the morning, Ken, what is the first thing you say to yourself in the morning? When I wake up uh, first, when I, my eyes open up, I go to gratitude every morning. I go to what I'm grateful for. And then I ask myself, What is the most uh, courageous steps that I need to take today to drive my business forward? That's usually where I go. And do you know what on Ken's show, because he's achieved a level of success, I would ask you at home, what's the first thing that you say? You know, I do have a level of gratitude and I roll over and one, I love to kiss my husband too. I love to remind myself that I'm on this side of the dirt. And what I don't do though, I recommend specificity. So asking yourself an open-ended question is not as if you're in the building mode of your life, 
What are three things that I can accomplish today that moves my mission forward? At the end of the day, you then get to go, what were the three things that I did? And there's an interesting conversation in people's heads about fear of failure and fear of success. Have you ever failed, Ken? Oh, I, I, if you're asking me that, I've failed many, many, many times. Many times. Good. And I, and I, but I also believe this. I believe that we don't really fail unless we fail to le- learn every single time. And this so is why he if we continue talking. to learn, then it's not really a failure. Yeah, it's something, it's something we're learning. Well, so here's the thing. When I ask people, they either have seem to have a fear of failure or a fear of success. Well, if you have a fear of success, guess what's going to elude you? And then this fear of failure, you fail all the time. And I will tell you the smartest thing you can do is when you fail, first admit it, go, okay, I failed. And then what is the lesson that you learn from it? Here's a word in my world that we don't let anyone say. No one is allowed to say the word trying. In fact, if you're in one of my classes, I make you get down on the floor and do five push-ups immediately. Because I don't, nobody cares what, I tried to do this. I tried to, to get to you, Ken. I tried, but nobody cares what you tried to do. You did it or you didn't do it. Let's learn from these things. And I'm tired of, of people fighting for their own mediocrity. And you can hear it in their words. The way they choose to express themselves, there's a lot of ums like, well, basically, you know, I have people erase all of those words out of their vocabulary so they can truly stand in a present positive way that affects others. And that seems to be what this is about. And I didn't always always know these lessons. I didn't know some of the basic lessons about getting a mentor, about investing in courses. No one, don't, I, I don't come from that world. Well, I'll tell you what, if you don't invest in yourself, emotionally, spiritually, physically, you know, put the time in in the gym and we can talk about some health and wellness because you can't get to my age or my, and, and be, or anyone's age and be able to do all that you want to do if you don't set out and intentionally decide and talk to yourself that you deserve it. Look in the mirror. And then the best part of this word game that I play with people is the word permission. Ken, what does permission mean to you? Uh, permission is a uh, green light for me. <laughs> Do you, I don't think that you get I don't think light. that you need all the permission. Do you know that by the time you're in first grade, you are denied permission almost a thousand times? Can I leave the table? No. Can I speak now? No. Can I go home mm. early? No. And you get this no, you get instilled that when you ask a question, you are trained to get a no. And it's very sad. Uh, We even made a movie about permission. It's called The Wizard of Oz. They didn't think they had permission to be courageous or have a heart, permission to go home. And then the problem is if you keep asking permission of some outside resource, you're never going to get it. You're not going to get what you wanted. In fact, in The Wizard of Oz, he didn't. In fact, he, he was not even a wizard. It was a guy. You want a guy, a little carnival barker to give you permission? Who are you asking permission from? Society, your parents, a teacher? How about start granting yourself permission? And one of the games that we play in my world is we have a little steel card. You look in the mirror and say these exact words. I hereby grant you, and you is the you in the mirror. I hereby grant you permission to, and fill in the blank. You know what kind of blanks you want to fill in? I hereby grant you permission to lose those last 15, 25 pounds. I hereby grant you permission to leave the abusive relationship. I hereby grant you permission to quit the job that you hate and you bitch about every day. I hereby grant you permission to be outrageous for no reason than you just decided to and Forbes Riley gave me permission, damn it. I love it. I love it. Well, listen, I got to take another break again here. But uh, before I do, what I want to do, you got a a workshop coming up and I want to put that on the screen real quick. It's three-day live uh, workshop, uh, actually a summit on uh, Zoom, and you've got uh, one of my, my favorite uh, friends, uh, Sharon Lecter, is up there with you. You know what? There's no link up is there. Is that correct? You to, yeah, but you want to go to www.realsuccesswomen. I guess the link is not on that page. So Real Success Women is the link that you want. It is a free, 100% free, three-day, full-day summit with some of the most powerful women on the planet. Women have grossed billions. Elena Cardone flies in her private jet. Stormy Wellington's made more than $20 million in a year. Lisa Copeland is there. She's the number one car saleswoman in the entire country. Sharon Lecter is the godmother of wealth and she co-wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's free. Can you imagine not being in that room? And that's not even mentioning my surprise superstar guests. I love that. Well, listen, they're scrolling the uh, the uh, address across the page right now. So we hope you'll uh, go check that out. It's going to be an amazing conference. 
And um, yeah, I love it. Okay, listen, I got to take a quick break. We got We're going to dive a little more into some of the success principles that you can use today, practical tools to be able to change your life and create the success that you've always longed for. Welcome back, everybody. This is Kendi Fuster, your host, as you know. In this show, we always bring you the top of the top uh, entrepreneurs and success uh, coaches and teachers and trainers in the world. And we have one today. Her name is Dr. Forbes Riley. And we are getting a whole bunch of tips on how to really change your life up in much, much greater ways than you have in the past. I'm wondering um, about uh, true success, right? We we hear of a lot of people that make a lot of money, but they're, they're just, you know, they're not they're not. In fact, I've coached a lot of them. They get to the top. They've got health issues. They got stress. Uh, their stressors, a whole bunch of stressors. They got broken relationships. They got challenges. What what's uh, what is that for you when you teach about creating wealth and money? How do you teach that balance piece in there too? Well, there's a couple of levels of how you define the word success. It's very very important if you're on this journey that you define what success is for yourself. And so one of the things for me is I found a little girl in the park. I have a fitness product that I created and I've sold millions of these things. It's called a spin gym. And I was in the park and I found Christina in a wheelchair. She had cerebral palsy. And what was very odd and unusual about her is that she had a massive smile on her face. This is a girl who will never get up and walk anywhere, has a very challenging life. And she's smiling like the happiest thing in the world. And I look and I was like, what are you doing? Why are you so happy? And she just was, it was who she was, who she is. And I spent a lot of years working and investing time and energy and just growing because she taught me so many lessons. One day she says to me, Forbes, you're the most successful woman I've ever met. And I said, really? Is it because I'm on TV and I do this? And she said, no. She said, you can walk across a stage in a pair of high heels and a tight skirt. And I never will. And that got me thinking about the definition of success and the level of gratitude that you need to have. Now, we, we can all easily say, yes, you, is success measured by money? How about it's your ability to generate money, not how much money you have. Um, and because it doesn't, if you've been given lots of money and you've got that in the bank, it doesn't make you successful by any means. It makes you rich. It makes you wealthy. And by the way, wealthy, again, you redefine these. I'm all about how to redefine words to make them work for yourself. One of the words I redefined early on was the word no. No stands for never ending opportunity. You're going to hear it a lot, but when you hear that, you're like, never any opportunity. Good on you. I redefined the word diet because I couldn't stand traditional diet programs. I didn't do well. When you told me I couldn't eat something, I, that's all I wanted to eat. So write this down. Not, a, not this way, but write it down as an acronym, D-I-E-T, decisions I eat today. That's what diet means for me. I've never had to worry about my food since I came upon that. I take it one day at a time. When I became a mom, how do you know if you're a successful mom? Well, I had to redefine that word too. I had two beautiful twins who couldn't wait to have them, but all of a sudden it's mom, can you do this? Mom, can you wipe my butt? Mom, I want to come on, mom, mom, mom. And I'm like, wait a second. And then the guilt of when you're being a businesswoman and you've got children at home. I said, let me redefine mom. M-O-M becomes moments of memories. And I thought about my own mom and I can't remember if she's been gone 25 years. I only remember certain parts of it. I don't remember... The, the dance that she didn't go to or the car ride that didn't, I remember eight things, 10 things, moments of memories. My children and I will remember going to the Great Wall of China and what we did there. They will remember, my daughter will remember a baked potato that she had outside a theater in London. Those are memories that we have carved out in stone. There's a lot of memories I'm glad we don't remember because sometimes I would miss a birthday party. I would do whatever it was when you're a busy working mom. Moms have a lot of guilt. I decided that was not going to be my way. My daughter calls me one day. I'm at an event and she says, mom, do you still love me? Broken hearted. She's eight years old. All the other moms are like, oh, baby, I'm coming home soon. I'll bring you a big present. You know what I said to my daughter in this world of redefinitions? I said, did the sun come up today? It's like, yeah, mommy, the sun came up. I said, good. Every day you look out your window, every day the sun comes up, you know that I love you. If it's a little cloudy, make sure you call me. But almost every day. Know and just trust how much I love you. Next day on the phone, she gets on and she's like, hey, mom, I see the sun and I love you too. We just redefined the way we think and communicate with each other. And that's been really important. So for me, success 
You know, there's a time and a reason in this season for everything. I don't know that you always have it all. So you have to decide how much, how important is a relationship to you? I stayed in, a, in one of my relationships way too long. You get what you tolerate. I then set out and wrote down all the things that I wanted. I finally stood up in my own powers. I'm going to excite you to do as well. And I made a list of what would serve my heart and not just tall, dark, and handsome. I drilled down to some responses that I wanted to hear. And you know, it's funny because my beautiful Joshua, we've been together six years. He did something yesterday, which really reminds me that the list that I wrote was really important. I, he, it was Valentine's day. And he, he's like, I said, I'm not going to really do anything. Every day with you is Valentine's Day. We just came back from a trip. We love each other. I don't need a present or anything silly. And he's like, you sure you don't want anything? I'm like, no. And he knows better. And you know what he did? In mid-afternoon, he said, I got to go. I got to go get some gas. Comes back and he's got a plate full of chocolate dipped strawberries. Because he knows that my no was like me being there. But that's the man that I wanted in my life. Someone who does, I'm going to start to cry. Who thinks about me and makes me special. I wanted that. I needed that. Um, I, my, how I raise my children, you know, knock on wood, they're happy and they're healthy. Am I successful? Yeah, I'm wildly successful. Do I make money? Yeah, I do. Do I help people? Yeah, I do. That makes me successful. It makes me feel worthy of being on this planet. And so Ken, I think when you decide what you want, what the legacy is and what you stand for, and at the end of the day, if you're sitting there and hearing my voice and you're like, I'm not, I can't figure out any of the things that she has. Here's what you do. Yeah. You go out. And you find a homeless shelter, you find an orphanage, and you help a kid who doesn't have almost everything that you had growing up, and you will feel better, I promise. I promise. I promise, too. That's that's uh, great sage advice. And um, I, I just I love the acronyms, uh, Moments of Memories. I'm always going to remember that. I'm going to tell uh, I'm about that. I think that, that's I love the point that we what you're telling people is about defining for themselves. Uh, of powerful communication. So when I take a, come back from the break, what I'd like to talk about is that inner communication and outer communication and how, as you teach, we can create success beyond measure with our communication. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. Welcome back, everybody. This is Kendi Foster. What a great, great show this is today. I'm just loving this uh, conversation we're having uh, with uh, Dr. Forbes Riley. You know, communication is the key to life. It's the, it's the key to everything is what I found. But you teach it, and you teach it in a way that people really get it. So let's talk about uh, inner communication, outer communication, how to be an effective communicator, and how that will change people's lives for it. All It's up to you. Let's, let's before, hear you. Before, that the break, before the break, I was playing around with some of the words that I redefine. I've got two gifts for you, Ken, if that's okay. One is the word sexy. So my daughter used to get mad at me. I would call, I would say, oh, it's so sexy. She said, mom, what is a sexy thing? S-E-X-Y, seeing excellence in yourself. And there's something about you that you need to fall in love with you before you expect someone else to tolerate all of your stuff. And falling in love with yourself is truly the beginning of amazing communication. To embrace all the things that you don't technically like, but every time you talk to your brain, Every time you say a word, you put yourself down and say, I'm shy. I, I, had a, I had a beautiful training with someone today, and I will share that with you, that there is no such thing as shy. This is one of the greatest problems that we have done with our kids ever. You can see my screen. So this is mom, right? And this is your little kid. So kids right there, tiny little kid. Uh, somebody walks up to, stranger walks up, right? This is the stranger walks up. And as soon as the stranger gets here, the kid runs behind mom's leg. Mom says, oh, don't worry, she's shy. Mom, you are so wrong. Not shy, really smart. This is two and a half times her size, like a big monster. You should say, oh, my kid is so smart. But they don't. They plant seeds in our heads. Well, she's shy. She doesn't like to talk to people. 
Let me tell you something. You're going to have to work some of these out because those words don't serve you. And the second word I was going to gift you is dad, which stands for dedication and devotion. If you dedicate and devote too much time to work and not enough time to your little ones, they won't know who you are. They won't love you the way you've wanted to, no matter how much money you give them. It turns out what kids want is they want time, love, and appreciation. And that's a funny phenomenon to have uncovered with your children. So there's a thing about your brain. Your brain has a conscious and a subconscious, okay? I'm going to share with you that you can talk to it in a way that you never imagined. Everything that you come out of your mouth is heard by your brain. And if you keep, and it has no sense of humor. I've been studying hypnosis and brain neurology forever. And so under hypnosis, under trance, very into a show, somebody will say, oh, I want you to cluck like a chicken. Why would you do that? Well, because for a moment you've suspended your belief, or I can say to you, Ken, under hypnosis, you can't remember the number three, right? Well, then count my fingers. One, two, four, one, two, four, 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 five, six. You came in with six fingers. I've had college educated people look at their hands going, I have six fingers. And then you come out of the trance. Of course, you could remember the number three. But if that's possible, could it be that every time you tell your brain what you can't do, it conspires to make sure that you can't do it? That's why we were talking about the word about failure. If you tell your brain it's a failure, it will work very hard to make sure you are. If you tell your brain you're a klutz, guess what? You'll trip over things. So this communication portal, we have uncovered a doorway. And it'd be interesting to try. Ken, will you come back on camera for a second? I've never done this live with someone on a, on a radio show, but let's see if this works. So, Mr. Ken, can you imagine that your subconscious is something you can talk to? It's in charge of what you do. Because when you went to bed last night, you didn't consciously think about having to make your hair or make your tears or push out your poop or anything. You, you didn't have to do that, right? Well, but somebody right. did. Somebody's in charge of that. In fact, as a woman, I gave birth to twins. I, I was trying to remember the day that I made their fingers. I think it was like a Tuesday. No, I had nothing to do with it. I lived my life and something else made babies. It's phenomenal how your whole body and your whole system works, right? So if you were to turn to your That's own right. little subconscious, what would you say to it? What's something that you would like to say to your subconscious that's kept you going for all of these years? You're amazing. You're beautiful. You're wealthy. You're filled with joy and love. Life. Now, let me ask you. A I love that. And I love your energy, which is why we are friends. But have you ever said something negative? Have you ever said you're not as good as that guy or you're not? Have you ever said any of those things? Oh, yeah. I had uh, I spent most of my life feeling less than everybody else in the world. And I used to tell myself that more than he's smarter than you. He's uh, better looking or she's she's not, not her her class or yeah, yeah, all kinds of weird, weird so messages. Can I, I can used I try to get to my with you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me try an experiment. Why don't you pretend that that, sure. little, that little foreman lives right down here, kind of look down at your right hand. And just for argument's sake, say to mm -hmm. that, that your foreman of your subconscious, apologize for saying something like that oh, out loud. Yeah, I'm really sorry that I've shared that. I'm really sorry that I've shared that with that. I've said those things to you. Wait, you know, now, yeah, now, it now, it, now, it now it's saying what must have really impacted. Be, be very specific, not those things. I'm sorry that I put you down and told you that you were less. Say that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I put you down and told told you that you were a loser, that you'd never amount to anything, that you are. Now stop right there. Uh, stop right there. Wait, hang worthless. on. Worthless. Well, okay, that's pretty powerful. Listen for a second, really carefully. What did he say back to you? Uh, two things. You're forgiven and it's all okay. I want everyone watching right now to realize that you just witnessed a miracle because we just heard Ken's subconscious talking back to him. Do you understand that you all have the ability to do that? That little moment that you had where you literally just said, I forgive you is the beginning of a healing. That's amazing. Have you ever asked your subconscious anything before? No, we're too busy telling it or putting it down or you're getting old or you're wrinkly or that's why I say cancel, cancel a lot in trainings, because that was such a beautiful moment. I want to applaud you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that is one of the um, one of the things when I uh, that I've learned also that you teach is that when <clears throat> you say something that uh, uh, 
Not true. I do say cancer. Next. Because I don't want that going into the conscious. I will tell you, it's it's important. And I love to just hold a mirror up. And I apologize for stepping in. You can. We just have a little bit of a static connection that I, I don't hear you as quick as you hear me. Um, whatever, it's technology. As long as you can hear me and it looks good on your side, we're good. But here's the thing, you guys. We're talking about communication. The words that come out of your mouth that you hear in your ears, really important that you establish a positive connection and you have the power to do that. So if your subconscious has no sense of humor, if you've put it down like Ken did, you might want to go in there and apologize and just tell him that you love him so that he can go. It's about time. You know, before you walk on a stage, when Ken and I both grace many stages, you have a choice. You can walk out there and go, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. Or you don't want to say that to your ears. You want to go, I'm so very excited. I've done this a thousand times and we're going to have a blast. It's your choice how you choose to communicate, what words you say. And it doesn't always have to be real. That's what affirmations are about because your subconscious, it doesn't know the difference. If you keep telling it how successful and rich and positive and wealthy in every aspect of your life that you are, you will begin to make actions and take and talk that way and things will come to you. And then here's what I want from you. And I want you to go to ForbesRiley.com. And I do not want you to say, oh my God, I can't believe it, Forbes. I got the man of my dreams and my... I want you to say, and write this down, I want you to say, Forbes, as expected, I got the man of my dreams. As expected, I'm living my dream life. As expected, all of a sudden, your attitude is different. Please don't tell me that you can't believe it because then we none of us can believe it. I'm living a fantastic life as expected because I paid my dues. I've been kind. I've given more than I've gotten. I continue to be curious and learn. And don't kid yourself. Every once in a while, the little negative nannies come into my ear and I got to go, I don't have time for you. That's the old way. That's how your mother would talk. She, she would put you, that's not, it's not here anymore. So if you take anything away from this beautiful conversation is that Forbes Riley is giving you permission, permission to be positive permission to be extraordinary permission to make a difference in the world and permission to reach out to me and tell me how I affected your life and how it's going. Because that truly, at this point in my life, is what matters to me. Yeah, that's on the screen right now, ForbesRiley.com. Hopefully everybody can see that. Forbes, I have to, uh, you know, we're almost out of time here today. So I have a question I want to ask you. You've got the stage to the microphone. We're in 185 countries right now. What is your message to the world right now? You've got about two, two and a half minutes to, to talk about that. What's your message? Well, I love you for that. My message is that you it's time. It's time for you to stand up and own who and what you are. I firmly believe if God does not make mistakes, then you are not one of them. And you do not have the right to put yourself down, to hurt others, to think that others have things that you don't have access to. I firmly believe in farmers. You take a seed, you plant it in the ground, you find really good soil. What does that mean for you? You surround yourself with great people. You put yourself in a positive state and then you have to add water and nutrition and sunlight. And it doesn't happen overnight. You're not going to wake up and be an Instagram star. No, there's a process. In my world, we call it Forbesing it. So F-O-R-B-E-S, you create your foundation. That's the F. Organize, you organize your thoughts, your desk, your car, whatever you need to do to learn how to do this. You release all the old memories, all the old bullshit that's not serving you. B, you believe more than anything in success. You believe in a vision. You believe that you are capable and do whatever it takes to get there. And then the E, get some education. Get There's so many places to learn. I have training programs on how to get your brain better, how to pitch better. There's people who can teach you everything in the world you want to know. Get educated. And it's not about going to college. And by the way, Sometimes don't let school get in the way of a good education. Maybe it's experiential travel. And S, it's very simple in F-O-R-B-E-S, you have to start. Please stop waiting for someone to give you permission to live your best life possible. It's within your hands. If you love what I have to say and you didn't hear it, rewatch and re-listen to this. Because the F-O-R-B-E-S principle, we call it the Forbes factor, is an amazingly beautiful way to live your life to the fullest. 
Well, I love it. And I wish you much success uh, on the on the summit that's coming up here. And um, we might put that up real quick again, just so everybody can see that summit that's coming up. And the dates up there, there are the, uh, let's see, we've got March 24, 26, 2023. Again, uh, Forbes, Dr. Forbes Riley, uh, Sharon Lecter, who is the, uh, 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 well, she helped make uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. She's the co-founder of that, co-author of uh, many of those books. And you've got who else is on that platform, Forbes? Oh, we've got we've got Stormy Wellington. We've got Elena Cardone. We have Lisa Copeland. I'm looking at Rolanda Watts, who had the TV series Rolanda. Marina Wari, who has one of the biggest homes in the entire world, flying her jet around from network marketing. We've got unbelievable guests and there's a lot of surprise celebrities that are popping in that you don't normally see on stages so it is a a three-day extravaganza we're going to have a happy hour party we're going to have musical guests we're going to have things and guess what guys it's free all you got to do is mark it on your calendar and show up but i guarantee it's going to be one an amazing event i love it okay well listen you've heard it uh from forbes today you've got some new success principles forbes thank you so much for being here i pray that you'll come back uh sometime this year and Maybe share a little more of your wisdom. Well, you are such a delight. Anytime you know how much I love you, you foster the good life, my friend. Thank you so much. Yes, I do. (laughs) So for all of you that have joined us today, I want to thank you for being on the Voices of Courage show. Please tell your family, your friends, your associates about this show. That's how we grow. And from my heart to yours, I pray that you continue to see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible. Till next time. 